After winning the Mountain West Conference in 2021, Utah State was looking to bigger, brighter, greener pastures in 2022, and it did not pan out that way. While this still was a postseason team, they definitely took several steps down the hill, and they could take even more steps down the hill in 2023. They lost even more talent from last year's team. However, this program is not all bare bones. There are still some good pieces to be excited about and some reasons why Utah State could surprise here in 2023. Will the Aggies start to climb that mountain back towards the top of the Mountain West Conference, or is this team going to still keep sliding towards the bottom of the conference? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel. I'm previewing and predicting all 133 FBS-level college football teams this summer, and I don't have that many left. So if I haven't done your team somehow, or you want to hear my thoughts on the season uh, as things happen hit the subscribe button ring the bell so you know when videos get uploaded but for more uh, you can help support my channel in more ways than just that you're doing one by watching the video you can do more by liking commenting sharing and anything else that you guys are willing and able to do to help me support my channel so without further ado uh, let's go ahead and talk about utah state football here in 2023 but we gotta know how we do things first we are going to go through a roster overview and look at who the team lost who's coming back and who's coming in through the transfer portal and recruiting class as well as taking a look at the 2023 aggie football schedule and we'll give it a game by game preview and prediction so without further ado let us talk about Utah State here in 2023. The quarterback room, let's talk about that. Logan Bonner is going to be gone. 753 yards, six touchdowns, eight interceptions last season. Not a very good style line for him. So he does leave as well as Bishop Davenport uh, is also going to be gone as well. 44 passes for 245 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions on 61% complete percentage. However, the primary guy last season was Cooper Legas, and he is coming back uh, just shy of 1500 yards last year 1499 to be exact 11 touchdowns 10 interceptions you'd like to see that ratio get better on 61 percent completion percentage hey definitely a guy uh that can be a really good starter for utah state he's got the arm talent uh pretty good player uh can do some with his legs two 303 yards and two touchdowns for him on the ground last season so we'll see what he's made of here in 2023 uh, as a full-time starter and then levi williams i believe a former wyoming transfer if i'm getting that right uh should uh is going to be coming back uh, to play the backup role for this team now th th there are some pretty big losses to this offensive skill position group most notably uh the the two main guys in terms of running backs and wide receivers we'll get to the wide receivers in a minute but you did lose a thousand yard rusher in calvin tyler 1122 yards to be exact seven touchdowns on just over 250 carries for him last year that's a big loss for utah state you do return though robert briggs who in 74 carries at 353 yards and one touchdown. Who knows if he's going to play up uh, to uh, the standard of um, uh, Calvin Tyler. The name's right in front of me. Don't know why that took so long. But I still think it's going to be a solid option in the running back room for Utah State this season. And then you get, do get a transfer coming into this program as well in uh, Davin Booth. Uh, that should give a boost to this running back room. Now in the wide receiver room, you lose a leader here as well as uh, Brian Cobbs, your leading receiver from last season with 923 yards and five touchdowns is going to be gone. Justin McGriff is also going to be gone. 450 yards and four touchdowns from last season, as well as 99 Davis, who on 14 catches only had 97 yards, uh, but still a notable loss for this team. Now, your second leading receiver, Terrell Vaughn, 56 catches, 624 yards, and tied with Cobbs with five touchdowns last year. Should be a really key part to this wide receiver room, but other than him, there's not a whole lot of returners to this wide receiver room here in 2023, so you're going to have to rely on some transfers, most notably Colby Bowman, Micah Davis, and a Colorado transfer transfer and Grant Page uh, among some other names that are going to be entering the wide receiver room for the Aggies this season. I think it'll be led by Terrell Vaughn. I think he will be that lead guy, uh, but it all just kind of depends on how everything unfolds around him by how well these transfers fit in. The tight end room is going to return Josh Sturzer, Brock Lane, and Parker Buchanan. Uh, and on the offensive line, Chandler Dolphin, Alfred Edwards, and Jacob South are going to be gone, but Cole Motes, uh, Allo uh, uh, Fale Pule is going to come back, as well as Jackson Owens uh, to this offensive line. Now, the offense, again, you lose some key pieces, but I think there's enough here, especially with the talent of Cooper Legas, to be a pretty solid unit. Now, when we take a look at the defensive side, 
you lose even more talent on the defensive side of the ball here as well. Definitely, this defense will be taking a step back, in my opinion, in 2023. Byron Vons, as we start out with the defensive line, was your leading tackler in the uh, front four. 56 tackles, two sacks last season. You're going to be losing him as well uh, as Patrick Joyner and Tavian Coleman are going to be some other pretty notable pieces that are going to be leaving this defensive line as well. So who does return? Well, Halle, uh, Motu, Apuaka, uh, definitely pronounced that last name wrong. I apologize, but he will be coming back. 35 tackles and second on the team with five sacks last season. You're also going to return the likes of John Ward, uh, 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 Pokesi, uh, Vakauta, uh, definitely pronounced that name wrong again. I apologize. And then Seni Tulaki will be coming back as well. But some transfers coming into this program as well. Sion Salone and Vaughn uh, Mamea is gonna, are going to be transferring in to this program to give a nice boost to this defensive line. And the linebacking unit, huge blow here as A.J. Von Fakon, uh, 101 tackles, two sacks last season. He is going to be gone as well as Kaleo Neves, um, who was the fourth leading tackler for this team last year with 59 tackles, a sack and a half. And Daniel Griziak, uh, who was the team's sixth leading tackler and led the team in sacks, 51 tackles, eight and a half sacks. He is gone as well. Now, when you get guys returning to this linebacker unit, MJ Tafisi and Max all four come to mind as guys who are coming back, but you do get a transfer coming in as well to help give you a boost. That's Gavin Barthiel uh, to give a nice boost to the linebacker unit. Now, defensive back room, what are we working with here? Second leading tackler, Hunter Reynolds, is going to be gone. 93 tackles, three interceptions, which was second on the team, seven pass defended. Not a bad year for him last season at all. You're also going to be losing guys like uh, Johnny Carter, uh, Gervin Hall, and Dominic Tatum, among some other very talented players, leave this defensive backfield. But who does come back? Well, Michael and Yanwu uh, will be coming back to this unit. 46 tackles, led the team with 11 pass defended last season. Ike Larson is coming back. He led the team with four interceptions last year, as well as guys like Anthony Switzer and Xavier Steele as well. And some transfers come in. There are more than just this, but these are the highest on the depth chart according to 24-7 Sports. Javar Strong, Logan Peely, and Simeon Harris. I actually think Peely is a little farther back on the depth chart, but I think he's a very notable transfer coming over from BYU. Your head coach is Blake Anderson, offensive coordinator is Kyle uh, Cefalo, and defensive coordinator Joe Cawthon as now we take a look at the Utah State 2023 football schedule. Any game at home will be underlined. Will any game on the road will be in italics or that slanted text. Any game you see in green is the game. I think Utah State's going to win easily. Well, any game in yellow is a back and forth 50-50 type game, but I think the Aggies will be able to win, and red is a loss. You start out the year with a Power 5 Big Ten opponent in the Iowa Hawkeyes. I think this is a loss. There's no way that the Hawkeye defense is going to be as bad as it was last season, but the defense should still be really, really good. Even with all they lost, if we know... If we know the way that Iowa plays football, they're going to be led by a, a really good defense. And I think the offense is going to be getting a lot better this year. This is just a tough draw for Utah State on the road in Kinnick Stadium. Don't think you will be winning that game. Idaho State is here in week two. Hey, here's your first win of 2023, Aggies fans. That'll be a win. Uh, the Bengals, a program out of the F FCS ranks uh, that will be beaten by the Utah State Aggies this season. Uh, then you already got your first conference game. It's on the road, a Friday night game against Air Force. And I believe that the Falcons are going to be uh, victors in this game. Now, Air Force is a team that lost a lot offensively. Hazik Daniels at quarterback was a dude. Brad Roberts was a dude dude for this team. He was really good an elite uh, talent that's going to be gone off this team. Uh, your two leading receivers, this is the Armed Force Military Academy team uh, that likes to throw the ball with the most frequency. Uh, so there is a lot being gone off offense, but the bread and butter of this team, the defense, returns a lot of talent. It's going to play some very, very good football uh, this season on the, 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 the defensive end. Don't know why words are so hard for me today, um, but... Uh, offensively i like a couple of the pieces that they have there maybe utah state can make this game interesting but on defensive talent and ability and strength i think air force is going to walk away with a win in this game then you got a non-conference game against a sunbelt team that surprised a fair bit of people last year and i think we'll do so again this year it's the james madison dukes they made the fcs to fbs transition look easy last season and even though they can't play for a bowl game or a conference title game this season I believe they will be doing so as well this year. J James Madison is going to be a very good, very competitive team yet again. A lot comes back on defense. you got some solid pieces on offense. 
uh, Utah State will be uh, losing to the James Madison Dukes. That is my prediction. I also believe that you will lose on the road to the UConn Huskies. I really like what the Huskies have th this year. You had to throw a true freshman into the mix at quarterback last year, but Taquan Roberson went down with an injury at the beginning of last season, missed the entire season. He's coming back. There's a lot of good skill position players coming back for the Huskies. Defensively, uh, you got some nice pieces coming back, as well as some transfers coming in at pretty much every single level uh, of this team. UConn made a bowl game last year, and it was no flash in the pan. UConn's going to be really good again this year. They're going to push almost every opponent they have on that schedule uh, and I believe even the Utah State Aggies who are going to suffer a loss to the the Yukon Huskies so starting at one and four not a great start for the Utah State Aggies however I do believe uh, you will get your first win in conference play here against the Colorado State Rams now Colorado State's going to be a tough out for anybody this season Clay Millen uh, didn't necessarily have the sample size to have a stat line that really impressed uh, a, a, a whole lot of people or got him high in a lot of statistical categories, but uh, did have a really, really good complete percentage above 70%. The defense that played so well last year uh, is getting some transfers to help cushion the blow, but I think there are enough pieces here with the Utah State Aggies. Uh, uh, again, uh, Legas at, at quarterback, I really, really, really like. I think he has a lot of very, very uh, nice talent, good uh, good arm strength, uh, good ability to see the field. And I think there's enough on this offense to be able to outduel a Colorado State defense that was pretty good last year. Uh, and I think Utah State's going to do what it takes to win in this game. So they get their first win in, in Mountain West Conference play of 2023 against Colorado State. But the win streak sadly stops at one because I do have you losing to the Fresno State Bulldogs. Hey, we know the story there. Uh, Jake Hayner, a lot of pieces gone on offense. But when you transfer in Mikey Keene at the quarterback position, should be the starter. Bring a, a lot of those guys up. I believe in the next man mentality there with Jeff Tedford's group. Some good pieces coming back on defense. Fresno State's a team that can compete for a Mount West Conference title again in 2023. I believe that Utah State will fall to that team. They will also be falling to the San Jose State Spartans. This is the team that has one of if, that has one of the best quarterbacks in the in, entire conference in Siobhan Cordero. And even though there are some big pieces leaving the wide receiver room, he's still got a lot. A very nice talent there. That is a San Jose State team that I really like that can push for a Mountain West Conference title. Even though, yeah, you do lose some some key pieces there. I think Siobhan Cordero is the key in a lot of games they play this year, especially here with a lot leaving this Utah State defense. He makes uh, enough plays, does Siobhan Cordero, to be able to help the Spartans walk away with a win in that game. So a late bye week here as you have to win out for the Utah State Aggies to be able to make a bowl game, and I just don't see that happening. I do not think you win that game in Week 10 uh, against Sa the San Diego State Essex. So you play San Jose uh, State before, then you play San Diego State after your bye week and the the Aztecs here are are going to be another team to uh be reckoned with in the uh, in the uh Mountain West Conference as uh as to say that the, the defense that has played so well for so long lost 8 to 9 starters uh this uh past cycle however when i take a look at that team i uh, fully believe uh, in all the defensive abilities they have there. It's an offense that found a spark at the end of last season. If that can continue into this year, going to be another dangerous team in the Mountain West Conference. Uh, however, Utah State fans, I believe that three-game losing streak does come to an end when you beat the Nevada Wolfpack. I cannot, cannot see that team not improving from last season. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, 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 of key pieces that come back for that team but I do not believe they will be up to task to beat the Utah State Aggies. Again, too many pieces in place here for this team. They will beat Nevada, but they will not beat Boise State. Taylor Green's the best quarterback in the conference. They got the best skill position grouping in the entire conference and some really nice pieces coming back on defense as well. Boise State. Uh, I think is the best team in the conference entering 2023 uh, and the team that will beat Utah State. But then on the road against New Mexico, a team that's at the bottom of the Mountain West Conference for so long, could see improvement this year 
but not enough to beat the Utah State Aggies. So I got this team making a little bit more of a slide this year, four and eight. Yeah, they did lose a lot, a lot of talent. But if there is, but if there are some things to believe in here with Utah State, I believe in Cooper Legas. I think he's a very good quarterback, and I like Blake Anderson there as well. Uh, if Cooper Legas can play well, the offense can uh, form around him, and some of these transfers fill in defensively. Utah State can make a jump from where I have him. But let me know your thoughts on the Aggies in the comment section below. And as always, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See you guys in the next video.